What exactly is it that makes somebody a hyper responder to their GLP-1 medications? How come it's like when they start this program, it's all of a sudden they can just say, that was easy. <laughs> and some of you can't get anywhere near the easy button. Is it just luck or is there something deeper going on? And if you're frustrated watching others lose weight faster than you, then you're going to want to pay attention to what I have to say, because I'm going to break down exactly why it's happening. And more importantly, what you can do to shift the odds back in your favor. I'm Dr. Jones DC, and I coach thousands of patients on GLP-1 meds every single day. This passion of mine comes from losing over 100 pounds myself and struggling for years to figure out how to maintain that weight loss. And now I work with my medical practitioners in a nationwide setting, helping individuals like you do exactly the same. And what I've discovered will completely change how you think about these medications. Let me tell you about Sarah, a 42-year-old nurse who perfectly captures this phenomena. Her first round with GLP-1 medications, brutal. Six months of perfect compliance, clean eating, consistent consistent dosing. She was following all the rules, yet she only lost two pounds a month. That's it. Sometimes even less. I remember specifically when she was like, Dr. Jones, I'm so freaking frustrated. It's like my friends are kicking ass and losing a bunch of weight. I'm doing everything right. Like what's wrong with me? She was very, very adamant about trying to figure out a solution. But here's where it gets interesting. That same Sarah, same genetics, same person, later became a hyper responder because what we actually did was fix what was actually blocking her. She dropped 18 pounds in about 12 weeks on the starter dose of semaglutide, 0.25 milligrams. So that's lowest dose and unless we start getting into micro dosing, which is a whole nother conversation. Her total loss, 62 pounds from struggling to lose two pounds a month down to closer to about one and a half, two and a half a week. What changed? We identified and fixed the hidden factor that was actually blocking her particular situation, which was that PCOS driven inflammation. This pattern repeats daily in our practice. Last week alone, I was talking to my medical providers. They had about five back-to-back -back patients, identical doses when they came to us. And the results were crazy, varying from two pounds up to we had some patients with a lot of weight to lose, closer to 22 pounds per month. It's not luck, that's biology. And once you understand the science, being a slow responder isn't permanent. In fact, with the right approach, you can actually become a hyper responder, just like our patient Sarah did. The difference comes down to four specific biological factors. And here's the part that nobody talks about. Your insulin levels throughout the day likely determine how much of the GLP-1 medication you're going to need to see optimal results. When insulin levels are elevated, even higher doses might barely move the scale. Now, after seeing thousands of patients, we've identified four biological factors that separate hyper responders from slow responders. The number one factor, hyperinsulinemia. What this means is chronically elevated insulin levels. There's a graph that I show patients and this really illustrates it perfect. A healthy person has elevated insulin levels. This is arbitrary, but on the low end scale, let's just say about 20% of the day. But someone with severe insulin resistance, which is the cause of hyperinsulinemia, their insulin can stay elevated above 75% or even higher throughout the entire day. And when insulin levels stay higher throughout the day, it literally locks your fat cells into fat storage mode. It makes it very challenging for your body to mobilize that fat, which is what it needs to do when you get into a calorie deficit. So think about this for a second. Your Ozempic is reducing your appetite and improving your insulin resistance, but it can only do so much on its own. If your insulin is severely elevated all day long, the medication is fighting an uphill battle. And that's why some people need the freaking maximum dose just to see minimal results. I had this patient, John, he was taking 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide, which is the maximum dose. He was barely losing weight. His fasting insulin was at 28. The optimal fasting insulin range would be at the lower end of that reference range. No wonder his medication wasn't working. If this is already making sense to you, by the way, and you want to understand these factors in a much more in-depth setting, hit that subscribe button because I'll be dropping new optimization strategies two times every single week. Okay, now number two is some Something that most doctors completely miss. Inflammation. Think of it like rust in your metabolic machinery. Your metabolism and your body's ability to burn fat is compromised by high inflammation. You can test high inflammation with a marker called CRP. We'll talk more about that later. But things like gut dysfunction, autoimmunity, they all drive inflammation, which all drive insulin resistance. And we already know how bad insulin resistance is for your ability to get the kind of results that you want to get. Remember, Sarah? Her PCOS was driving massive inflammation, which ultimately made her more insulin resistant. We addressed her inflammation and she was able to speed up the results. Remember, she was losing about two pounds a month. 
If your CRP is over three, you are fighting inflammation. Over 10, your body's on fire and weight loss becomes very challenging. I've seen patients need maximum doses just to start losing any amount of weight. When we see that, we usually find high levels of inflammation among many other issues. Number three, thyroid. Here's what drives me crazy. Doctors will check TSH and they'll say, you're fine. But the TSH doesn't tell the whole story. You need to look at free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. Now, GLP-1 medications can actually help with suboptimal thyroid function. I've seen it probably by reducing inflammation and it makes your receptors more sensitive. But here's the thing, optimizing your thyroid markers, specifically getting your free T3 up and reverse T3 down if it is too high, can significantly enhance your results. And we've seen it all the time. It's like removing the park brake when you're trying to accelerate that car. Lisa came to us and she was on Manjaro for four months with minimal results. Her TSH was normal at three and a half, but her free T3 very, very low, like between 1.5, 1.6. Reverse T3 was above lab high. My medical practitioners optimized her thyroid function with the prescription of NP thyroid, and she lost 18 pounds within six weeks after getting her thyroid normalized. This is the power of optimal thyroid function. Number four, cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone, and when it's chronically elevated, it overrides everything. Poor sleep, work stress, even over-exercising, they all spike insulin. You ever feel like you have these days where <laughs> no matter what you do, it's like your eyeballs are just popping out? Well, that's high elevated cortisol. It's no longer happening to people just for physical stress. Just mental stress does it. High cortisol tells your body that we're in danger. Store everything. It doesn't matter how much Ozempic you take. Cortisol wins almost every single time. Night shift workers and new moms are perfect examples of dysregulated, meaning non-normal cortisol. And with those kind of patients, their patterns are completely flipped and they often need very specific lifestyle modifications and supplements just to get normal results. By the way, which of these four is hitting home for you? Drop it in the comments, insulin, inflammation, thyroid, or cortisol. Now, let me show you exactly which tests to get to uncover your specific roadblocks. So how do you really know if these factors are affecting you even before the tests? There are some clear signs to watch for, and more importantly, then we'll get into the labs that reveal exactly what's blocking your results. The signs are simple. The scale is barely moving despite taking the medication, despite increasing your dose, and you're putting in some real effort. You're not messing around, eating a bunch of crap, you're exercising, you're really trying, and you're making these changes, but the scale is barely moving. This is the dreaded slow responder. If this sounds like you, after several weeks of putting in this effort, then you likely have underlying issues that are blocking your response. The good news though, we can identify them and we can fix them with some critical labs. Understand that your doctor probably won't order these unless you specifically ask, and sadly, insurance companies, they won't cover them. But the good news is, is you can find some low cost labs easily online, or you can even reach out to us if you need some help. Number one, fasting insulin and C-peptide. If over five away from that lower end of the reference range, then you may be progressing towards insulin resistance. Number two, high sensitive CRP. Over one means inflammation and over three is significantly high. Number three, a full thyroid panel, including TSH, free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. And maybe a four-point cortisol salivary test, which shows your pattern of cortisol rhythm throughout the day. That one's more expensive, and so generally, we don't need it that often. Here's what kills me. Specifically with the fasting insulin test, most doctors, they won't even order this until you're freaking damn near diabetic, and by then, you've lost years of potential ability to optimize and fix this. But don't stress out. There's some good news here. You can actually order many of these tests yourself through online labs if your doctors won't like we were talking about earlier. And again, we can help you. By the way, how many of these labs have you actually had run before? Drop in the comments. I personally read every single one and I can help point you guys in the right direction. Once you know what's blocking you, transformation can happen fast. Let me show you the exact protocol. Now here's where it gets exciting. The exact protocol that transforms slow responders into hyper responders. This isn't about working harder Although that's part of it. You got to work hard. You got to get off your ass and put in some effort, but it's about working smarter and with your biology. So the foundation is the flow protocol, F-L-O-A, fasting like our ancestors. This is what I've created over the past 20 years of working with individuals after my decade of struggling. This is so much more than fasting, but it's a base of strategic fasting with lifestyle interventions that focus specifically on improving your metabolic health and metabolic health. Really, we're talking about insulin resistance and inflammation. I'm going to 
graph that I showed you earlier, we got to get your insulin levels lower for more often throughout the day. The way we accomplish this is strategic meal timing to optimize insulin periods, targeted nutrition that don't spike your insulin when you're eating, and movement patterns that enhance insulin sensitivity. We start gentle and we build up from there. Say weeks one to two, time-restricted eating, like an eight-hour eating window every day. Weeks three through four, lower the carbohydrate intake, shooting for about 50 grams of net carbs a day and adding some solid resistance training where you're really trying to build muscle. And then finally, after that, some longer therapeutic fasting windows when appropriate. Now, here's the key. We're going to pair my medical practitioners, your GLP-1 medications with these lifestyle interventions. So hunger isn't an issue. The medication handles appetite while these interventions will fix the underlying issues driving your insulin resistance. Within two to three, four weeks, your cells start to be responsive to insulin more aggressively than the medication alone. Fat loss unlocks, energy returns, and most importantly, the scale moves much faster, which is what a lot of us need to keep us happy and excited. But here's where we can really accelerate results, and that is with peptide stack. Now, I want to be clear here. While formal research on these peptides is still ongoing, I'm sharing with you what we've observed in our clinical practice by working with thousands of patients. As a reminder, always work with a qualified and licensed medical practitioner. And I want to be clear. We only recommend working with high quality peptides, specifically from ones that are called 503A or 503B compounding state licensed pharmacies. Number one, AOD 9604. This is a game changer to stack with your GLP-1s. What it is, is a modified fragment that specifically targets fat cells, helping your body remember how to mobilize fat efficiently, a skill that you will develop over time with enough fasting and low carb eating. When you combine with GLP-1s, this is the synergy that significantly enhances your results. A new peptide, Sloop 332, is going to amplify GLP-1 even more because they call this guy an exercise mimetic, which has the effects of literally mimicking exercise in your body and how it reacts specifically in those batteries of your cells called mitochondria. Boost fatty oxygen oxidation by 25% and leads to significant fat mass reduction while preserving muscle mass. This is so important. These fat mobilizing peptides, they add an extra angle in addition to the GLP-1, again, protecting muscle mass, enhancing fat loss because protecting muscle mass in the future is so important. I got to show you guys this because this is such a big deal. This is one pound of fat. This is one pound of muscle. And you look at the difference between this. This is huge. It's so much more important to understand that as the scale is going down, Yes, you can use that when you have a lot of weight to lose. But as you start getting closer to your goal, you really need to pay more attention to the size of your body. Because as you saw there, there's a massive difference between a pound of fat and a pound of muscle. Very, very different. Okay, so let's talk inflammation. Our advanced protocol for addressing inflammation. We got powerful peptides like BPC-157, which is incredible for gut healing and systemic inflammation. We particularly have a compounded pill of BPC-157 and KPV, which is another peptide specifically targeting inflammation in the gut. So those are very, very powerful together. A lesser known medication, low dose naltrexone. Low dose is kind of like microdosing. Naltrexone is FDA approved for something completely different. This is incredibly powerful for autoimmune based inflammation and some good supplements to stack along your journey. Curcumin, about 1,000 milligrams twice a day. You can throw in some resveratrol too as well. Omega-3s, about two to three grams per day, where you're getting at least a full gram of EPA, DHA fatty acids. You can look at the back of your label to see. Vitamin D, most patients need about 5,000 IUs a day, but get your labs tested and continue to increase your dose till you get about 50 to 60 on the labs. And then magnesium glycinate, about 400 milligrams daily. The combination of BPC, KPV, and LDN is like hitting the reset button on your inflammation. Most patients will see their CRP drops if it's high, will see their CRP drop by 50% within 30 days or less. This is no joke. This is a powerful inflammatory program. In fact, I'd argue this is the most powerful anti-inflammatory stack that's not harsh on the body like corticosteroids and various biological medications. Okay, so thyroid. If testing reveals issues with thyroid or cortisol, we have to address it. The solution for thyroid is simple. Work with a functional thyroid practitioner who understands optimization, not just normal ranges. They're gonna look at the whole picture, those labs that we talked about before, but they're also gonna look at your symptoms too as well. Tiredness, brain fog, constipation, feeling cold, achy body, hair loss, brittle skin and nails. These are just some of the symptoms. And if you have half or more, I don't care what your doctor's telling you, you need a second opinion because you might have suboptimal thyroid function. And when it comes to 
cortisol, this can be tricky. I like to target high cortisol with various angles when it comes to supplements. Adaptocrine from Apex Energetic is my preferred adaptogenic blend. Adaptogenic herbs are powerful herbs that seem to balance out certain things in the body. In this case, the way your body tolerates stress. And you got to add some stress management techniques like breathing, meditation, whatever works for you, and sleep optimization. This is absolutely non-negotiable. Seven to nine hours of quality sleep is the goal. This timeline is simple. We focus on inflammation for week number one. And by week number two and three, we'll start to notice insulin sensitivity improves. And then week number four, you're officially starting to transform into a hyper responder. But don't just take my word for it. Let me show you Maria's transformation from barely responding to becoming our clinic's success story. Maria, 45 year old marketing executive, she was doing everything right before getting nowhere. She was hitting the gym five days a week, perfect macros, slowly escalating from two and a half milligrams to 10 milligrams of terzepatide over a six month period. Total loss only 15. She had 110 pounds to lose. Like she wasn't having this. Dr. Jones, like, I don't get it. I'm literally doing more than everybody that I know. <laughs> like, this isn't working. Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't, if I, if I listen to another TikTok that gives me another piece of advice, like she just went on and on and on, very active in, on social media. But what we found when we ran the right tests, her CRP was 8.2, normal was under three. Her ESR, which is another inflammatory panel, was 35, normal was under 20. She had high thyroid antibodies. So she didn't even know she had Hashimoto's, which is a very prevalent and common autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid, causing massive inflammation. No wonder she wasn't responding. So my practitioners, implemented exactly what I've taught you so far. We added low dose now Traxone to address the inflammation and calm down that immune system, peptides BPC-157 and KPV for the inflammation. And she was willing to do a flexible carnivore diet. Now I'll talk about that in other videos, but essentially a less strict version, a more sustainable version of the carnivore diet, adding some dairy, adding some low glycemic fruits, low sugar fruits like berries. And then we kept her on the GLP-1 of course, and we added the flow protocol lifestyle changes within four months. Maria lost 55 pounds. That's more than triple her previous rate. Her inflammation markers normalized. We turned her from a slow responder into a hyper responder just by addressing the root cause. Okay, lightning round recap here. High levels of insulin, flow protocol, lifestyle with lots of fasting. High levels of inflammation, BPC, KPV, LDN, even a carnivore diet. Thyroid issues, go see a proper functional thyroid practitioners. Elevated cortisol, get some adaptocrine supplements, optimize your sleep, relax, chill out. We've helped over 5,000 patients make these exact transformations by implementing various lifestyle interventions, just like the ones that I've taught you today. By the way, are you currently a hyper responder, getting great results, or a slow responder? Drop it in the comments because I want to create a community here where people can share their journeys and have a safe space to do that. Now that you've seen what's possible, let me show you exactly how you can start your transformation. If you're a slow responder, get those labs that I mentioned, fasting insulin, CRP, full thyroid and cortisol. Don't wait. Every week that you delay is a week that you're not optimizing. And if you're already responding, but you want to accelerate, start with the inflammation protocol, those peptides and supplements that I mentioned, total game changers. But here's what nobody's telling you. The longer you stay as a slow responder, the harder it becomes to change. Your receptors become more resistant, inflammation compounds, hormones drip further out of balance, you can always get yourself out of the hole. There's never a point of no return, but as you can imagine, that hole gets deeper, it gets harder to get out. So why make it so much harder for yourself? Maria waited six months before getting help and she could have helped herself and saved months of frustration and thousands of dollars of wasted medication costs. Now remember, being a slow responder is not your genetics, a character flaw, freaking bad luck, or permanent. It's simply unaddressed biological factors that can be identified and fixed in most cases. Every single patient that we worked with who focused on working with us to implement their lifestyle changes so that we can get those root causes, they became a better responder. Hyper responder, better responder, whatever you want to call it. Remember, slow responders, I've seen these traits, high levels of insulin, high levels of inflammation. Commonly, they have thyroid issues or cortisol through the roof. Get these factors tested, address what's broken, and you will transform into a hyper responder. I promise. Now, if you're serious about wanting to become a hyper responder, I want to help you personally. We have medical practitioners on staff and we together we've guided thousands just like you through these exact transformations. Click that link below and book yourself the free discovery call. In 30 minutes, we'll review your current protocol, identify what sort of issues might be going on, and help map out a personal transformation.
optimization plan. Every week you wait costs you progress and money on medications that aren't working optimally. You're not broken. Remember this. You're not a slow responder forever. You just need the right approach and let's do this together. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want a deeper dive into more issues that are commonly affecting patients that we see every single day, check out this video here at the 10 mistakes that we see patients making all the time and we'll see you guys later.